I will be resetting the NHL with a fantasy draft and selecting 20 players to build a team. However, the players must have a secondary position. If a player is only assigned to one primary position, they are not eligible. After selecting my team, we will assemble them in franchise mode and simulate with the hopes of winning a Stanley Cup. This is the part where we find out what team we're representing for this draft. Although this is the most fair way to do it because it's completely random, I feel like we do get a lot of teams multiple times, but here we go. The Smashville Predators, probably like the fourth or fifth time already. Listen, I don't make the rules, all right? There will be no owner mode. There will be no jabroni. We will in fact be seeing a fantasy draft, however. I'm just gonna go out on a limb here and say that we get pick number eight. The great eight, Ovechkin. You heard it here first, so just show me. We already know it's true. We. Get number three. Oh, wow. Connor's gone. Kill mccarr has gone. I believe they both have only a primary position. This guy right here is only a centerman. Quinn Hughes, is he left slash right? No, he's exclusively left. So that's unfortunate. Pass is just going to be a right winger. I feel like we have to go with Nate. Center slash right wing, 96 overall. He's going to be a unit. Also, it's not rocket appliances, but obviously this rule does not count towards goaltenders because you can only be a goaltender. Although we have seen G slash G in the past. If my memory serves me correct, which it usually doesn't, that's only in entry drafts if you're doing a franchise mode. We could take Rantanen or Dreisaitl a little bit less on the salary department, but no, we're going with Nathaniel. Trying to decide what route I want to go here. We could grab Stamkos and he could be the left winger, the sniper for Nate. I also have a feeling our defense are going to be not good because a lot of the high-end defensemen that's the first one I've come across, 88 overall. I could have OV play with Nate. Stamkos might be a little bit better. I don't really know. I'm actually trapped here. Patrick Kane? That's another playmaker though. Well, actually we can't even take him because he only plays right wing. All right, screw it. All right, it will do it live. Steven Stamkos, welcome aboard. Verhegi's another center slash left wing, but I'm sort of thinking we need to go with Uyghur here because I want a good defenseman. I'm gonna have to keep reminding myself that this draft is for primary and secondary position because I keep seeing players and like, yeah, why don't I take this guy? And then I realize, yeah, yeah, I'm doing it. He's not gonna be two positions, is he? No, that would have been awesome. Our next pick's gonna be super close to this one, so I don't have to grab Pavelski yet, but he would actually be awesome for that first line and really get all of the player types in there. Vinny Trocek, 90 face-offs is available, but what about Jacob Chikrin? Lefty slash righty could play with Uyghur. I just double-checked, Uyghur is right-handed, so they would work, but you know who else would work? Ekholm, and he's got two abilities. He's also making 1.4 more. I think he's worth it. I'm gonna go with Trocek. Ha! <laughs> gotcha. I don't like that I'm doing this, but I'm gonna skip out on Pavelski for now. He could still be there. The odds are really low, but I feel like I'm going with Ekholm anyway. All right, it's official. This is the one. Pavelski, still available. We've got good defense. Haven't drafted a goalie yet. 100% doing that right after this. Maybe waited just a little bit too long. 86 overall is the best. Our defense should be solid, which is going to help, definitely. 86 overall, making 1 as opposed to 2.7. Let's go with Cameron Talbot. Another dual position player here in Matt's Zuccarello. Playmaker, great for the second line. And our cap isn't too bad so far, so yeah. I am sending it. What's our second line looking like so far? Did we get a centerman for that line yet? Yeah, Trocek. Okay, so maybe I should go after Jonathan Hiberdo. And we can figure out the salary cap later. Or is that too risky? Ideally, I want a sniper for that line because we have a two-way forward and a playmaker and Kuzmenko fits the bill. Two positions right there in front of your face. Let's get that contract signed. I'm debating on just going all out and getting Charlie Coyle. No, he is not making 9.5. That scared me for a second. We definitely need to start getting some defensemen here. For some reason, I thought we had three, but we only have two. So Nikita Zadorov will be joining our team. Steep contract. Good overall, though. He's 34. Yeah, why not? Now I need to clean my act up. I just realized I was wearing my glasses. The reflection's probably horrible. I'm sorry. But we should be good from here on out. At least I realized it now. What does that say? Scott Lawton? I'm just messing around. Yeah, we're going with Scotty boy. Center slash left wing making tree milli. Thank you, Ryan Hartman. I thought he was only going to be a right winger, but no. Apparently he dabbles in the center spot. And because of that, he's eligible. I know Flower's there. All right. I love him as much as the next guy. I do want to draft him. I've done it a lot for no particular reason. 
We're drafting Lion. Henrique is dual position, right? No, he's only center. No, he is dual. That was a roller coaster of emotions, but it ended on a happy note. Welcome to the team, Adam Henrique. Even this guy dabbles in a few positions. He only makes 1 million right now, which is very good for us. He will be our 16th player, which means we'll have about 10 milli for four players, so we can kind of splurge a little bit. I need not one, but two right-handed defenders that are dual position. Can we find them? We got one. Actually, I guess if you're dual position, it doesn't really matter what handedness you are. I had to scroll down way further than I wanted to, to find a right-handed player that is dual position. So we're going with Ian Cole. He shoots left, but apparently he can play the right side. So he might be doing just that. I would have taken him, but we can't afford the salary, unfortunately. Another center slash left wing, 89 face-offs. It's kind of hard to say no to that. However, I'm going to because I just spotted Marcus Foligno. Go out there and take a bunch of penalties. Blake Wheeler's got two. Right wing slash center. What a way to finish off this team. 800k. Just start engraving the cup already. A little summary of our team right there. Every time I'm drafting the team, I was like, yeah, this team's going to be sick. And then I see this screen and I usually start to second guess myself. This do be one of those times. But you know what? Maybe the chemistry will be all right. Maybe we can get this done. Our goalie 86 and 83, I believe. We got a great first line. I don't know. That doesn't really mean anything, according to the simulation engine. It is time for the chemistry reveal. Can we have no red? And we can have a plus five on the first line. Don't mind if I do. However, I would prefer that. Very much so. Kuzmenko is a left winger, and Zuccarello is a right winger as their primary position, but they both play their offside according to the way they shoot. So if I do this... It should work. Recently, we haven't had any offensive chemistry issues. Defense is where we've kind of been getting destroyed, but that's not the case today. No, it is not. We got a plus two, a plus one, and the zero. That's okay because their overalls make up for the lack of chemistry. In net, we have Cam Talbot backed up by Lion. I'm just going to run through real quick to make sure that everybody is a dual position. Yep, we're golden. So I am going to say that Nate gets the most points with 101. He is going to go off. Our team of 48 wins we're in the playoffs let's simulate for some reason i had a feeling that jabroni was gonna try to put stamkos on the second line center and i wasn't gonna have it but nope for once in jabron's career he understood the assignment let's go run a bit of a tear right now mm -hmm. i don't know why but every loss seems so big and then i look at our record and kind of calm down a bit. We're still killing it. The Avalanche are doing amazing though. They are probably going to win the President's Trophy. It's too early to say that, but it's looking that way. 40 wins by the trade deadline. I'm not going to say no. I'll welcome that with open arms. Very close. You know what? Great job. We've got Zachary Hyman. We've got Jonas Brodin, Bobrovsky. I feel like he's on the block every single time. Some trades to announce. We're starting off with a big one. Tavares, Ayafalo, and a fourth headed to Carolina in exchange for a first and those two. Two firsts and Komarov headed to Buffalo in exchange for Monahan, Orlov, a fourth, and Barabanov. Wow, Philly kind of beefed up there. Tarasenko and Lindell heading to Arizona with a sixth in exchange for Joaquim Kamel. Poirier, I tried my hardest, a second and a sixth. Brodeen Blackwell and Phil Kessel. What overall is Phil the Thrill in this game now? I honestly haven't seen him in forever. A first and Wahlberg headed to pity. Hyman did in fact get traded to the St. Louis Blues for quite the package. I just did a quick look around the league. We are definitely the closest to challenging Colorado for the presidents. But they are far ahead and, you know, the gap between them to us and then us to the next team is much different. How many wins are we going to finish with? We're at 50. We're not at 50. Not even close. Well, kind of close. 47. 48. No, I was going to say if we win out, we get 50. But no, we definitely are not getting the precedence with that. But that's fine. We actually wound up second in the division. 101 points. We had one more win than the Colorado Avalanche, but they had 12 overtime losses. It would be the Ottawa Senators swooping in like a hawk and taking over that president's trophy spot. Their post-trade deadline must have been crazy. Fourth in the league for us, though is amazing. Dallas getting snubbed at the 12th spot and who makes it in the 21st place Golden Knights. That is pathetic. Stamkos actually had the most points, 82, and then we get 80 apiece from Nate and Pavelski. That's kind of surprising. I expected more from you, Nate. Second line did pretty well, 65, 64, and then 58 for Vinny. And Mackenzie Weger had 40. Talbot had some all right stats. 907 save percentage, 287 GAA. Lion, phenomenal backup numbers. We didn't really have a defensive core that was set up to get goals and points. 
So 40 is good. Bazzi had a season to remember. 44 wins, a 922 save percentage, eight shutouts. Of course, the guy we could have drafted, Semyon Varlamov, also had 44 wins and a 917, 270. Kim Talbot's up there, though. Not a single defenseman was point a game. Kale McCarr, one shy. Fox had 75. And then we got Dougie and Norrissey, 71 apiece. Okay, that's concerning. The team we're playing in the first round of the playoffs has the Art Ross winner, Sam Reinhardt. Another guy that I wanted to draft, but couldn't even if I wanted to because he only plays right wing. 104. At least we were second in the league for most fights. Well... The player with the second most fights. These are the lads right here that won the President's Trophy. They got Matthews, Toffoli, and Goudreau. The second line has Zibanejad and Besser, which is crazy. But then they got Dimitri, Vince Dunn, Jared Spurgeon, Pesci on the second pair. And there he is, Semyon. Our first round opponent, the Arizona Coyotes, which are going to be the Utah Hockey Club. Jeff Skinner and Sam Reinhardt playing with Tarasenko. Beauvillier, Eichel, and Domi. I feel like we have the better team, which doesn't really mean anything. Defensive core overall is solid. And they've got Gibson's finest in net backed up by Kachekov. First three games, everybody knows the rules. Let's see how we do. That's a great start. Now keep it rolling, okay? I hate this. Make it a best of three pretty, please. I'm asking nicely. They did it. Now take the lead in the best of three. No. Here we are again. Round one. Backs against the wall. Wow, who would have thought we'd be here? 139 remaining. That was just unnecessary. And rude. Okay, it's as good as done. Yeah, four nothing. Get me out of here. What an absolute joke, man. What do I need to do? What do I need to do? I swear when we finally win a Stanley Cup in this game, I'm popping a bottle of champagne. It's that crazy. We've already looked at Ottawa's roster because they won the President's Trophy, but now we need to look at the Golden Knights who are playing them for the Stanley Cup. Really good first line. I can see them doing some damage. Rossi, Quinn, and Howla. Eh. Rossi's already 86 overall. Like, these two are going to be really good. Howla's a bit older, but you know what? It still works. They brought Hannafin back. Playing with Ethan Bear, Clifton, and Gooley. Connor Ingram and Nat Corpusalo. What We should be in the finals. We really should. Let's advance one day at a time to see who wins the Stanley Cup. It is the Ottawa Senators taking a 1-0 lead. They take a 2-0 lead. Let's keep going here. A 2-1 series now. Golden Knights get a game back. Okay. Ooh, they push it to a best of three. Who takes the lead? It is the Golden Knights. That would be crazy. Oh my goodness, they actually did it. Also, I already got rid of the screen, but shout out Manitoba Moose. You won the Calder. There's not really much to see here. None of the players did too well in the playoffs. Cam Talbot got lit up like a Christmas tree back there. Sub 900 save percentage, 351 GAA. Gross. Two points from Uyghur. Satorov and McDonough both got one. We got deleted. Connor Ingram. 16 wins. That's how much it takes to win a Stanley Cup. So the math is mathing. 904 save percentage. Nearly a 930 for Varlamov is absurd. Vazzy with an 895. Make it make sense. Definitely not going to be a defenseman winning the Conn Smythe. Not even close. Vili and Noah both had 12 points in 26 playoff games. I'm no mathematician, but I'm pretty sure you're not winning the Conn Smythe with those numbers. Found him. The one winning the Conn Smythe is Tage Thompson. He had 28 points, 13 goals, was a plus 7. William, 24. Eric Howla, 24? What? Okay, so that second line was just insane. Howla, Rossi, and Quinn. What do I know? I see you, Ovi. Don't worry. The Art Ross goes to Sam Reinhardt, but the Hart Memorial goes to Miko Rantanen. Drew Doughty gets the Norris. Patty Kane with the Lady Bing. Bedsy gets the Calder Memorial. Tage Thompson with the Conn Smythe, as we saw. Vazzy does get the Vesna and the Jennings, and then his playoffs fell off a cliff. Labushkin awarded the Bill Masterton. The Jack Adams is awarded to Culp. Rory obtains a Selkie Trophy. Rantanen again getting a Ted Lindsay here, and also the Rocket Richard. We have to win eventually, right? Like, even if we just get lucky. You try enough times, you're gonna get lucky. Right? If you guys could like, subscribe, that would be absolute heat. If you tried this draft, let me know how yours went. Let me know if you also find it much more difficult to win a cup in NHL 24. Draft ideas, video ideas in general, comments down below. And on that note, I appreciate you, and I'll see you soon.